I'm gonna show you three unique ways that you can use these objects to create drip art in your next acrylic painting. The inspiration for this video is Halloween, so I'm transferring three of my spookiest sketches from my sketchbook onto my favorite watercolor paper. Seriously, this stuff is amazing. I use tracing paper to copy the original image, and then I put the tracing paper and carbon paper on top of my watercolor paper, and voila, it's ready for painting. For this first technique, you're gonna to wanna to grab your Posca pens. This is an alternative brand that I've been using and it works really great too. Choose your favorite Halloween colors. I'm gonna choose purple, pink, yellow, and blue. I like psychedelic colors, okay? I can't help it. In my defense, I painted all of my sketches with white and brown paint to give everything a spooky vibe. Spooky, spooky! This is your time to experiment as much as it's my time to experiment even if it doesn't work out. Let me get my first victim, this adorable spider. I'm just gonna pump this until I have a good amount of liquid on my page. It doesn't look like I'm getting much of a drip effect. It looks like the Posca pen is failing me. Oh, come on, what the heck? I'm gonna use these other paint pens and see if I can get them to drip. Oh, there we go. Oh, it's beautiful. That's what we want. I wanna try with the Posca pens again because I feel like the light blue was actually just running out of ink. So I'm using pink and it looks like the pink is gonna work. All right, ready? Are you ready? It's not dripping. So I'm gonna go with these for obvious reasons, okay? All right, let's do it. My plan is to create the drip art along the outside of the spider and have it drip down from the fangs. And I'm gonna start at the legs. I'm gonna bang it on my table so it drips. Ah, oh, drip this way, drip this way. I'm just violently banging my art on the table. <laughs> I'm shaking out my past pen. I'm picking a spot on the spider to put it down and creating a big blob. And then I'm picking up my paper and I'm shaking the heck out of it. My next color is going to be this light blue. More violent banging. I'm going to start putting it in multiple spots so I can get some of the colors to mix together. Yeah! I'm adding some more drips by hand to complete the entire look. Moving on to victim number two, the skull. Apple barrel paint is already watered down, so the consistency should be perfect for this project. But just in case, let's practice first. I have a bunch of these, so I'm gonna actually put my paint into them, so that way I can take my eyedropper and get the paint out like so. Yes, like that. These are some of my favorite colors. Ooh, oh, oh. I think there's something in my paint. And that works. <sighs> oh, the challenge here is figuring out how to get it to drip the way I want it to. I'm still really scared. <laughs> my idea for this goal is to apply the paint on the head and have it drip down. I'm gonna start with my lightest color first, which is yellow. I'm gonna hold my piece of paper up on a slant and I'm just gonna apply the paint. Ooh, oh gosh. The, the eyedropper works really well for the drip art. I would say it produces the trippiest art that we've seen so far. It's just incredibly hard to control and some of the paint was actually thicker than I thought it would be. Now that the skull is dry, I'm gonna add some finishing touches with Posca pens. I'm going to start by enhancing the art by adding some more drips. Anytime you're trying something new, don't expect it all to work out right away. You're allowed to take other materials to finish up your piece. I invite you to grab your pencils, your Posca pens, or your acrylic paint 
because this is your time to experiment and you can do this however you want. Moving on to victim three, skeleton butterfly. <laughs> this technique is similar to the eyedropper, except it's inspired by my childhood. Whenever I had a glass of Coke with a straw growing up, I would put my finger on top of the straw and use it to pull the Coke out. I'm thinking that this would also work with paint. I could be very wrong. Now, I think that this paint is a little too thick to actually get it into the straw, so I'm going to water it down a little bit first. I already feel like this is a really bad idea. This is all experimentation. You can run wild with all three of these ideas later on. I'm just helping you figure out where to start. I just mixed my paint with my water until I got a consistency that looks like this. So I'm gonna put my straw into the liquid like that, put my thumb on top of it like so, pull it out. I mean, flicking it on works too. Um, and then, I mean, I wonder if I can just put it on the piece of paper like this and then, you know, go like that. Oof, so far, I think I like the straw technique the best. We have to apply it to our art. So this is the scary part. My idea is to create a drip effect inside and outside of the wings. Who's ready to make a mess? Oh dear. Oh, look at it go. This is actually turning out pretty good. Oh. Oh, wow. Out of all three of these methods, I think the straw method worked the best. I don't think this one needs much more done to it. It just needs that little bit of something to bring it together. Which drip art technique was your favorite? Tell me in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe for more fun acrylic painting techniques. If you enjoyed this painting technique video, go ahead and check out this video where I paint using bubbles. And I'll see you next time.